Hi. Uh, so this is Anna Bedoya. And Anna just is the maker of the journal that we saw earlier. And there it is. Look at that. That's great because now we can see the scale of it as well. Yeah. Um, fantastic. All right. So, so Anna, um, we talked earlier this week during our meeting about your interests in entomology and in insects and kind of your background in learning about those growing up. So you were telling me when you were a kid that you would like be interested in the bugs in your grandmother's garden. You want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so growing up, my mom, she's always had a lot of plants, um, primarily like medicinal plants. Mm -hmm. So when we would go to Mexico to visit my grandma, she also had a lot of plants. And so I would just walk around her garden and obviously insects in Mexico are different from the insects here. So I just got lost in her garden and that's how I really became kind of really curious about insects and how they create their own homes and how they sound or mm -hmm. the metamorphosis that they go through. So it's just, it's vast, you know, but um, it really came from that. And then I started noticing how I would just find dead bugs mm -hmm. in the city, a lot of bees, which you know, we need bees. Right, right. There's a lot of like um, environmental uh, things going on that are affecting our insect population. Yeah. Um, and pollinators. Think, right, pollinators, for instance. Yeah. And and I think people are less aware of the importance of insects and like what, what their value is that they contribute to society. Yeah. And one big one is bees, you know, honey and mm -hmm. food. Right. Um, so... And you know, sometimes it's hard to talk about how much I I love insects because I feel like there's no words to express. Right. Yeah. Um, so okay, so you you got into bookmaking in college. I did. Right, and it was sort of a result of being interested in like sculptures and. Uh, so kind of yeah. tell us about how that happened. Yeah. So I went to school to the Academy of Art. I graduated in 2013, mm -hmm. and I went to school for sculpture. But when I was there, I had a really great teacher and mentor. Her name is Cheryl Kuhn, which is a great mm -hmm. artist also. And um, she told me, you should take a bookbinding class. Yes. And I'm like, but I don't want to make books. <laughs> and then, because I do installations and all these other things, right? And then I was like, you know what? I'm going to take it. And so I took it and I fell in love with it. Because then I realized that once I learned the bookbinding, the bookbinding basics, you can really expand and do whatever you want yeah. with it. Right. So that's amazing. And that's how I, I first started getting into, well, obviously the book binding, you make books. Um, and so being a sculpture major, I have tried different things mm -hmm. using the same skills of, or techniques of, as book binding. Right. And you were yeah. saying they're more accessible because, you know, unlike welding or ceramics, it's harder to have that studio like in your home, but the book bind, the bookmaking things that you have but yeah. you can have in a just a regular room in an apartment and and have well, access can, to it. Yeah, you can literally do it. I mean, I know you can do any kind of art anywhere, but it's easy to be able to do book binding on the go almost book because, go, you, right. just, you know, old random papers you can just use for right. that. Yeah, and, and the diversity in book binding itself is really cool. Like I have this really tiny little book. Oh, how cute. And so then you can get like the big ones like this. They you vary know? in size, they vary mm -hmm. in style. Yeah, yeah, there's a whole bunch of different types. Um, so going into kind of the content of your work, because we were talking about your entomology interests. And um, so the content of your work is very personal because you have this interest in insects. And then you have, um, you talking about like, you said it, it, it's like dreams and memories. So can you tell us how the dreams kind of connect to the content in your pieces? So for people that know me people that don't know me i enjoy dreaming going in dream space is one of my favorite things so the artwork that i make a lot of times um i tap into whatever dream space i tap into and then when i wake up i'm like wow that was interesting so for example sometimes in my dreams i speak other languages languages that <clears throat> that you wouldn't hear on this planet and so 
I then crazy and cool. I've never had yeah, a Yeah, so then I use those that. languages and I'm like, okay, how would it sound or how could I draw or how could I write it? And so it's um, a lot of the drawings I do, you can see it looks like scribbles, but it's not actually scribbles, it's actual writing that I've made based on the dream that I remember of the sound. I'm gonna bring up your I'm going to bring up one of these images so that they can see what you're talking about okay. real quick in the screen share. Yeah. So let, me, let me do that real quick. Okay. So it's this beautiful piece. It's got a B in it. Am I, sh I'm not sharing the right thing, am I? <laughs> it's okay. Um, and because bees are, well, not only bees, but a lot of bees or bees in particular for me, they have a special place in my okay. heart. Yeah. So you can see around the hexagon. Yes. That's yeah, that's the language that I pulled from my dream space. And um, this painting, I call it El Pintor, which means the painter. Because mm -hmm. he goes around, bees go around painting flowers, color on the planet, you know? Right, and, by being pollinators. Right, pollinators. And so the blue and the yellow and the primary colors is essentially here. And then the green represents the planet. So it's nature, primary colors, which from there you can make any color that you want, you know? Right, yeah. Yeah. And then the hexagonal shapes are of course indicative of the bees. Um, and, and then there's that, you were saying that's like uh, related to secret geometry, which is- Yeah, the, yeah, sacred geometry. So sacred. you can find geometry anywhere on the planet, on your own face, your own body. Right. And it's really cool how these little, little creatures can make such a beautiful and perfect um, like structure. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know? the little hives, their cones um, that mm. they do. Yeah. Oh, and a lot of um, architects, they, they, it's called biomimicry. So they look at, you know, nature to build structures and so on. So they are their own little architects and, um, I don't know, I just find it so amazing. I can easily get lost in just exploring their worlds. I often go in my neighborhood, I live in Oakland, and I often go on walks and just look at different plants and try, I always try to take different routes to see what other flowers are out there, plants and so on and so on. And then I, like this drawing of this bee, I actually found this bee outside of my house. And so I picked it up and I brought it and I drew it. And then it just, this all came to be. But as, as I was walking around, I would hear different insects. And so because of the dreams that I, where I hear different languages, sometimes I, I almost get like in a meditative state where I try to remember the dreams at the moment. And then it's just a huge combination of different things that happen at the moment. But this one, that's what this one represents is dreams that I've had were other languages and then earth and the primary colors and mm -hmm. yeah. It's a beautiful piece. And then this one you actually have prints of um, yeah. uh, in, in the site, right? On your site right now. So that's yeah. that's a cool piece you can find there. So it's it's the bookmaking, you do so many different things. There's the bookmaking, there's the, the beautiful illustrations and you also make, and we'll just talk about this real quick because I think they're so cool. These little sculpture boxes, they're bookmaking techniques but they have elements of them that are kinetic. Yeah, they're kinetic books, basically. Mm -hmm. And so they open and close in different ways. And so they are really kind of to house these insects that I find on the ground. And, and they, yeah, you, they're like, they're like a little container. So you make the container and then it's sort of like when you see pinned butterflies or pinned bees, like in frames, only you have built their own little place. Yeah, yeah, because I, when I find the bugs, I pin them because I I've done bug pinning before and right, and then I use them in there, Amazing. and I have a lot of bugs in my freezer. That's that's so cool. And then you have like a really specific way for determining because there's always like ethical like ideas behind uh, collecting of of dead animals and in particular bugs. Um, so you kind of have your own personal process for that. You want to share that a little bit? Yeah. So. I either find them or friends have found them. And so what I've told my friends when they find them and they give them to me, I tell I it's synchronicity because essentially I'm like, wow, if I cross my if 
if I popped in your head when you mm -hmm. saw that bug, that means it's meant, the way I interpret it is that it's meant that that bug wants to be created into art, you know, right. for bringing more awareness. And so um, it's just really cool to see how many people have actually given me bugs because the, the, other, of you. Of, the other way of getting bugs is you go and you catch them yourself. But I find that to yeah. be, that's disrespectful you know mm -hmm. to just go and trap them and then yeah. the other thing that that they, that exists is they have bug farming just like there's farming right. any kind of other plant or animal mm -hmm. so that's one way to do it too they 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 grow them specifically for bug pinning right. however i choose not to go that route also in respect for the planet and so right. if i find it outside my house on my walk it's meant for me and right. or a friend collects it and then gives it to me. Or right, not, not like it. hunting them down. Yeah, that's really interesting. Um, can we, we also have a demonstration video that yeah. I would like to share. Can we do the, the little book binding demonstration? Let me pull that up um, and see if it will do the screen share the way I want it to. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, can we see the video now? Let's see. Yeah. And then I'm gonna make this full screen so it looks a little bit better if I can. Yeah, so this was a time lapse of my, one of the journals. And right now, actually, what I, this this video kind of shows a uh, time lapse of, so I have a lot of papers, as you can see behind me, I have a lot of supplies. You can't see everything, but I have even some in front of, like behind the computer. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking one day I went to, I take a lot of hikes in nature and I was like, okay, I have so many paper walking around the trees remind obviously paper comes from trees mm -hmm. and so I thought you know what I have so much paper that I'm just gonna start creating all of these books and out of scrap material that I have and not, mm. not go and buy more supplies yeah that's very sustainable yeah and yeah. so here I'm basically I collected all of these are different scraps of paper that I had and I just cut them and use them and so the sheets themselves that's oh i don't know why i was holding that but the <laughs> themselves are they're called signatures and so it's just paper like regular old paper cut in half and then i poke the holes which by which then becomes a book um book block mm -hmm. which is all the pages together and here i'm just sewing them and those strips are paper that are the red and the blue they're mainly just for support and for aesthetics yeah uh, or more aesthetic than it is support actually. And then um, the the cover, which is the brown part at the, that's laying in the back, that one was also just this paper that I had laying around and I have so much of it that I decided to start making these little small flexible uh, journals so that whoever buys them, they're, they can easily travel with you. Yeah. So it's nice that they can, you can take them with you and um, it also kind of has that leather effect to it, which because of the straps, you know, like the old leather bags and everything. And it looks like you're adding like a one of your prints. Yeah, because well, oh, that's so cool. When I was doing, um, I'm j I have all this this bins with with a lot of scrap stuff. So I just searched through there, and I had a lot of those little prints, so I decided to use them also instead of just recycling them or throwing them away or whatever. <laughs> Okay, we have more photos. Let me pull up the, yeah. the other screen share. I'm uh, I'm telling it what I actually want to see. <laughs> it's it's tricky with the technology. You got to tell it what you want. Okay, here we go. So this is the finished book, right? Yeah. So this is the finished book, and this one I actually titled it Viento, which means wind. Okay. And I titled it that just because it reminded me for whatever reason at that point, it was like the wind, you know? So the name of that little drawing is called uh, Los Co El Cosmos, Mexico y Egipto. So it's kind of the cosmos, obviously, Mexico yep. and Egypt. So it's like a combination of the cosmos being like dream space, which is around the frame. That's the language that, right. uh-huh. And then Mexico is the, the cacao beans because we have cacao beans, not only Mexico, but I'm from Mexico. So I, we use them there, I use them there. Right. And then the beetle itself is from Egypt, or not from Egypt, but it's a play on the one from Egypt. I've been to the like um, the scarab, the scarab, yeah. yeah. 
and I've been to Egypt and it's just an amazing place to go. Like it's so amazing. Energetically and just so many things about it. And in the beetle itself, there's a lot of more of that writing in there. Right. That's and where all of the art history classes start with Egyptian uh Egypt because it's one of the most ancient cultures that we have actual preserved art from so that's yeah. that's very significant sorry I didn't mean to interrupt go no, ahead <laughs> great. I forgot about that part yeah it's an interesting detail um but yeah, yeah. and I then attach these in yeah and so then I just figured like okay I have all these supplies I can just make these little journals that are not that difficult to make they're a nice pocket size mm -hmm. and then um somebody can really use it you know yeah that's beautiful they're lightweight so I, I like them because they're lightweight you can travel but also the binding there it was just like a play on it you know just twisting it um yes yeah I like that so that's not part of the structural that's a little element that you've added the twisting and the the wrapping yeah just for that's fun really cool. it's beautiful but also the the twisting there's a whole I, I mean I don't know so much about in the book binding world but from my own personal stuff when even in your hair when you're braiding your hair you know you in the indigenous culture there's a lot of prayer that goes behind it so as you're as I was doing that it was just kind of like whoever gets this journal may spark whatever needs to spark for them you know? oh that's beautiful so you like kind of give the journals some uh, intention like good intentions yeah. going out into the world that's so beautiful yeah. and then here's your your final like the the tools that you were working with yeah so those are the tools i figured i'd show some so the glue and then those rulers that that ruler that see-through is one of my best friends because you can really see has your measuring out everything right the clear ruler is such an important tool in art i completely agree i have a favorite one that is also a clear ruler um and then can you talk to us about some of the bookmaking tools that we're we're maybe not familiar with yeah so that the white one there that's a bone folder mm -hmm. uh, it's made out of actual cow bone oh, which i didn't know that until like after i bought it and the teacher was telling us i was like <gasps> so that was kind of like <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then the mechanical pencil you got exacto knife the thread is uh, one of the another like pretty important one usually you want to have wax waxed thread so that the sheets right. can go together mm -hmm. um, and there's different thicknesses depending on your desire uh, right. and then that the stab tool that one you know for punch the holes yeah in all is the as an all the correct oh one? yeah and all. yeah <laughs> I, I was thinking i don't know if that's true for bookmaking but yeah. I think of owl when I see that. Yeah, I think of owl when I hear that word. Oh yeah. Woo. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. And the glue, which you know, yeah, is right here. specifically for book binding. So and it's it, acid free, right? I, as I understand it. Yeah. 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 Which yeah. means that the paper won't deteriorate from the glue. Just which is, other... yeah, it's archival. <laughs> archival, I guess. Archival. Yeah, it makes it last longer. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, I'm gonna close the screen share. Beautiful. So, okay, great. That That's so cool to like get that insight on how those are made and see like the process of assembling it. it it's a lot of work to build a single journal like that. Yeah, yeah, it is. So what do you have in your shop right now that people can go and purchase? Everything right here. Okay. Which is on my website, annabeloya.com. It's hard to see them because they're, they're small behind you. So it's a bunch of, these are a bunch of journals. Are they yeah. the scrap journals? yeah so these oh, are look how cool those are yeah oh that's beautiful i love the bees and then there's different kinds of sewing they're all different but again i had like these prints laying around and i was like i need to make some art with them you know yes and so again like scrap paper so there's different colors so like this one has so gray cool. and like cream color yeah um and then these this one too is just like they're all really they're all very literally just unique to their own yeah their own yeah and this one's one of my favorites actually as a bug oh oh i love that and it looks like it's kind of like dented in a little bit it Was is that, yeah how's that done yeah i have to carve into the this bottom uh davy board and then you peel away you okay. kind of like you're like take layer by layer so you draw in the triangle and then you exact use an exact knife to cut it out 
and then you slowly peel away until it indents. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then, and then I put the picture in there and then it's like, like different. And then this is old uh, graph, graph paper. paper. Yeah. And then this bright green paper. That's so cool. Yeah. You know, that kind of reminds me of like, um, like zines from like the DIY punk scene a little oh, bit, yeah. having the different varieties of paper. That's so cool. Yeah. And then yeah. this one's not in the shop because I made it for myself, but I wanted oh, to show you enough. about how you can find old books, mm -hmm. take out the inside and make it your own. So, like, oh, how cool. Yeah. So, yeah. If anybody wants to try that too, like, I'm more than happy to. Yeah, each and everything like that, that would be a that would be a commission thing, and you can um, yeah. you have a contact page on your website that people can contact you for possible commissions. So yeah. yeah, if you guys have like an old book that you're attached to, but um, you know, like aesthetically, but it doesn't it doesn't do any good for you as a book, then maybe make it into a, a lovely journal. Yeah, it's pretty easy too. So yeah, yeah, super cool. Okay, so um, and then you've also got you've also got prints in your shop. So like the the bee that you've got above you, that's one of the yeah. prints that we looked at yeah uh, and then this one and then this one and then there's another one that's an ant oh lovely uh, and then all of these that i just showed you those are on the under there's three categories there's uh prints the scrap journals and then just regular journals regular journals they take me a lot longer and they're more detailed yeah, they're more detailed that makes yeah. sense yeah so the scrap journals are like they're what's the price range on the scrap journals they're like twenty two dollars to thirty dollars. Okay, that's a, that's pretty affordable. I mean, that's that's like a that's definitely in the same category as what you could find at like a Barnes and Noble, but made by an actual artist that you know the the yeah. money goes to someone who makes amazing things. So, just throwing that out there for the audience. <laughs> yeah, because it, I mean, for any artist, really, whether you're you're a writer or a visual artist or whatever, like it takes time, and so takes time. It's always appreciated when people support us, of course. Absolutely. So, okay, again, um, when you go after the, after the event's over, when you go back to our event page, you can find uh, links to Anna's website in her bio biography section, and you can also see some of the photos of some of the work that she has. You can go and find her shop there and her contact her contact. Uh, page. So thank you so much for joining us, Anna. I really appreciate it. It was lovely talking with you. Yeah, thank you to everybody that, that came and thank you for having me. Yes, of course. Hey, thanks for watching. For more videos like this, go to the link here. And to support us, you can join the Patreon by going to the link below.